Uh, well, I guess since we've got the two of you together, our main topic will be Stargate. But uh, I noticed you've got a big swimming background. Yeah, I, mean, I was a, I swam for the British international team, and I was training for the Olympics and all of that. Yeah, so I was swimming from six years old, and yeah, that was my life. What made you change? Um, you know what? I was burnt out. I was training six and a half hours a day in England. I uh, got out of the pool the one day. I'd been living there for three years and uh, sat on the side of the pool. My coach came, put his arm around me. He said, you're going home. I said, yeah, I'm going into the military. I just decided. 17, I'm going into the military. And I went back to South Africa into the, into the Air Force. Yeah. And that was kind of the end of my swim. I swam for the Air Force, and, but I, that was the end of my swimming career and my, my dreams of being an Olympian. And what did you do in the Air Force? Uh, we flew choppers up and down. We were at war with Angola in those days. So I was part of a helicopter crew and you know, flying up and down. Yeah. yeah okay. And then became a system lord. Then became a system lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like that. Just like Overnight. That. So, um, I can swim. You can swim? He's from Jamaica, he can swim. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised, you know. I, yeah, know, people, I know people from the islands who do not Weren't swim. They? Wow. Did they, yeah. I know, I can't, I can't understand it still, but I know them. Yeah. They I would think they mean... Swim, did they? A big one. They had to Jamaica swim. Swim. They had Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. You had a bobsled team. Come on. <laughs> yes, we could get a bobsled team, and they couldn't swim. We're even putting together a hockey team, an ice hockey team. Wow. Ice hockey. Yes, that's, awesome. that's the latest thing. That's great. <laughs> It'll be a movie in a couple of years. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. So you still do any sports or any description? Well, I don't ice skate very well, so you won't see me in that movie. <laughs> okay. Good. But I am familiar with most of the uh, the sports from the old British Commonwealth, so I I can talk cricket if you want. I can uh, I play f uh, football, which is for me soccer, and um, I noticed that Australia did pretty damn well at the World Cup this year. Yeah. yeah. And I, I do water sports. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm in the ocean like four days a week. I paddle surf and oh, kiteboard. Yeah, that's my thing. I, I live for the water still. Yeah, I'm, I'm a water baby. Yeah, obviously. Yep. Right. And I'm one of those guys. I can pretty much play any sport, but nothing really, really well. I, I can snowboard, I can tennis, I, you know. I always watch sport better than I play. <laughs> do you? Yeah. I'm chess sportsman. Right? Yeah. Chess player. I'm chess chess player. I was a couch sportsman. <laughs> Um, um, well, Stargate. Mm. What drew you to Stargate, each of you? Uh, I, got, I got the audition. <laughs> yes, yes, that's usually where it begins for us, you know. I mean, when I, uh, when I, actually, to tell you the truth, I knew Brad Wright before he got the Stargate franchise. Brad Wright is probably mm -hmm. the one who was most instrumental in pulling that thing together. And uh, Brad's first job as a writer was on a Canadian television series called Neon Rider in which I had a part and Brad came on like second season as an apprentice story writer, story editor and um, quickly rose through the ranks and um, it was during that period that he told me that he was uh, interested in the Stargate thing and I went yeah right sure but he pulled it off, brought it together and um, was kind enough to uh, give me an audition for the role of Tilk. Oh, really? Tilk. Yes, oh, really? that was my very oh. first audition for Stargate, and um, it was during that whole process that uh, Michael Greenberg noticed the vague physical similarities I have with Jay Davidson from the movie and said, why don't we get him to read for Apophis? At that time I had shoulder length, length dreadlocks. And um, Ra had long hair in the movie, so I think that's, uh, yeah. And I, I, I actually met Mike Greenberg through a friend of mine who ended up being his wife, a uh, South African girl. And um, I knew of the show, of course. I'd never watched it. I knew he was the producer, but I didn't talk to him about it at all. And uh, after about three or four months in Los Angeles, he, we were walking along the beach and you know, a couple of us, and he just said, you know, I think I'd like you, you know, in the show. And I was like, well, of course. You know. But, I, you know, I would never approach him and say, you know, how about the show? He knew what I'd done. He knew my work I'd done in South Africa. And 
uh, obviously the accent and being something a little different, you know. Um, and then I just read for some arbitrary parts. They just wanted to hear me read. Uh, the character of Baal wasn't even created yet. And then it was a couple of months after that, so I just received a script in the mail and said, okay, we want you in Vancouver next week. And that was it for me, you know, so it was quite amazing. So I think Baal was written with me in mind already. Uh, which was phenomenal for me, of course. And but I still, over the years, I never knew from episode to episode whether I would be back or not. It's not like they gave me a ten-episode deal or anything like that. It just purely, I would just wait. Out. I would wait to see that brown envelope arrive in the mail <laughs> with the script. Oh yes, yes. Vancouver yes. next week. Yes, oh. that was so. a similar s a situation to mine as well. Mm. Uh, I, I, I wasn't in every episode. You know, it was just a question of. Um, when do we need the bad guy? Right. And, um, uh, in the early days, it started out pretty well for me, though, because uh, I wound up in double episodes, season right. openers, season closers, right. sweeps yeah. week, That's great. ratings week. Those are the ones that, that they, re they yes, remember. Yes, yes, yes. So it worked out very well that way, actually, being used sparingly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Did you find the roles challenging? How about the makeup? The rest of the um, for me, I didn't really find the role challenging. Um, I, I brought a lot of myself into the character, so it was kind of easy for me to play. A lot of the technical stuff was difficult, doing the clones, a lot of green screening. I hadn't done that much before, so a lot of that was very new to me and a good, you know, big learning curve for me, which was great. Um, and working in those conditions with the kind of costumes I used to wear, which were very, very hot and summer in Vancouver inside the studio it's a hundred degrees I, I, I got heat rashes from those costumes um, so that you know all that was kind of challenging working on that but the actual character I mean I just loved playing ball it was just like such a I would just play myself I would just go in and talk you know and it was great you were enjoying yeah yeah it was just a great character you know what about well I think by the time um, by the time Val came around, there was a great deal more freedom to say what you wanted to say. Uh, in my day, there was a lot of gibberish, and um, that was one of the things I found most difficult, the Kalmek Shak. Mm. Business that um, I think I only had to say that once. Yeah, in one <laughs> episode before I ate the symbiote, it was like I had to say that kind yeah, of stuff, so and the rings came down. Yeah. After that, I never said anything like that. No, again. No, no, I'm quite jealous of that. Um, but there were there were there were a few episodes where I got to speak some English, which I really appreciated. Um, one particular line <laughs> sticks out in my in my mind, um, and I believe it was in the episode The Knox where I was able to look Richard Dean Anderson and go straight in the eye and say, Fool, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed that? But it was scripted for me. It's not like I ad libbed that or anything, you know, or, or brought my, any of myself to that. It was, uh, yes, I definitely enjoyed that. I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed the scenes I had to play with Tilk a lot too. Yeah. Unlike Richard Dean Anderson, who tended to ad lib a lot, I believe. He ad libbed a great deal. Yeah, well, he could get away with it. Yeah. Yes, and he, he did that a lot during script read, read throughs. You know, when the script would come down, we'd sit around the table and uh, have read throughs, and Richard Dean would um, say something off the cuff, and the writers would just immediately <laughs> scribble it down, and then we'd get a rewrite. Mm. Yeah, he did that to me a yeah. couple of times where. Because obviously we learn the, the dialogue, we know what the other actor is saying, and, but you have to be aware that he can change stuff in the scene, and you just got to go with it. Except there was a few times when it, what I had to say made absolutely no sense because of the way he changed it, you know? And I would just put my hands up and go, sorry guys, I, I can't, I, I have now? no comeback. And, you know, then they would ask him, Rich, please just, you know, say that line, because it has to lead into what I'm saying. So. Um, but that was him, you know, that's, that was his thing, that was his shtick. Yeah. Well, that had some spontaneity yeah. to it. <coughs> For sure. And some of them stuck, some of them are classics. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. think? Yeah. I think is yeah. one of the famous ones. Yeah. <laughs> and Continuum, and then there's cake. Yeah. Well, yes. that's what he, that's, he just comes up with that stuff. Yeah. And it works. It does, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think you're like... So what's the future for you both? Yeah, what do you want to know? 
Um, well, I've been guest starring on, luckily I've just, uh, I just came off two episodes of NCIS New Orleans, the new show. Okay, we've only just started that here. Yeah, yeah, so, well, it's also just started in the States two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Um, oh, same, because we have this stuff now, straight from the US. Yeah, um, yeah. and then in between that I shot Castle, an episode of Castle, and the beginning of the year I shot two episodes of The Americans, which was amazing. I haven't seen that. Yeah, it's a great, great show. And I've just finished writing a book called called Under the Cover of Darkness. It's a, yeah, it's about my year at the Moulin Rouge behind the scenes. <coughs> Excuse me, not yet. I'm in the process of trying to get an agent and get it published. But it's written, it's done. Uh, I wrote it with a partner who's a, she's quite an accomplished novelist. And it's, you know, the nightlife of, Par nightlife of Paris, the, the dark side of Paris. I got involved with some mafia there and yeah, all that kind of stuff. So it all comes out in the book. Yeah. What's it called? Under the cover of darkness, a year at the Moulin Rouge. Look out for it. What about you? Uh, lately, I've had a couple of a uh, couple of small appearances in sitcoms, which is, I guess you would say, the other end of the spectrum from something like Stargate. And um, I am in the very early stages of uh, a project that I'm not willing to talk about because it's being written. I'm, be, I'm conceiving it with a friend. It's still conceptual, you know, and you could talk to me. Um, watch this space. Yeah, watch this space, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and otherwise just living life, you know, and um, I'm do I've been doing a lot of conventions. Uh, you know, I'm getting to know Stargate better now that I'm out of it. Than, yeah, that's than what happens. That, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Stand back. And, yeah. and, 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 and the other actors. Him. And um, yeah, I, we're just, it's, it's sort of shifted now from an active going concern into a nostalgic sort of phase. And, um, but it, it's not really losing steam. Not at all. It's not, no, not at all. It, it's, uh, yeah. It still amazes me. Yeah, it still amazes yeah. me. It's picked up a cult. It really just keeps yeah. going. Yeah. The thing with sci-fi, once you've got the cult following, it just yeah. never dies yeah. off. Yeah. You know, it just keeps well, we're going. Very, we're both very grateful yeah. for that yeah. cult following. It's amazing. It can keep you on the convention. Yes. Change of scenery yes, for quite some time. Yeah. 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 It, it keeps you feeling relevant. Yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah. 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 And appreciated. Yes. Yeah, and what's great, I mean, you know the Stargate fans who are like fans of mine, watch you in anything else you do and are very supportive in anything else you do you know and uh, they've seen it I mean this the, the episodes the producers actually of uh, the Americans um, all of a sudden started getting tweets from my fans from yes, yes 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 and of course for me that's amazing that's excellent thing you know it's amazing happened. but that's the amazing thing with social yeah. media you know yeah. so they will watch us in Whatever we do, because which is great. Because yeah. of Stargate, they're attached to yeah. the character. Right, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. right. That's great. Yeah. Isn't yeah. That wonderful? And they'll never, yeah. ever get over it. They just can't yeah. you No, I mean, as an actor, I mean, you. you've got to yeah. be so thankful yeah. for that That's because great. the actors come and go. And, and we've just too. been, because yeah. of Stargate, it's been like, yeah. they won't forget. No, they, they won't yeah. forget.